My dear readers, in the vaudevillian spectacle that masquerades as intellectual discourse in episode 419 of Jordan Peterson's podcast, we find ourselves ensnared in a web of verbosity that purports to dissect the world's energy and environmental dilemmas. Here enters Scott Tinker, armed with a quiver of documentaries and a shield of geological knowledge ready to do battle in the arena of public opinion. The term elites is bandied about with reckless abandon, a nebulous moniker for the shadowy figures who supposedly orchestrate our societal downfall. Peterson and Tinker deploy it with the finesse of a butcher wielding a scalpel, hacking away at the complexities of global leadership until nothing but a caricature remains. Which elites are we to distrust? The carbon-cloaked magnates who pontificate on sustainability from their private jets, or perhaps the intellectual chameleons whose convictions are as fleeting as the seasons? Tinker, bless his heart, attempts to navigate this quagmire with the aim of finding some mythic middle ground. The ARC conference, he claims, is a bastion of rational thought in a sea of madness. Yet one cannot help but snicker at the notion that such gatherings are anything more than echo chambers with delusions of grandeur, where the same tired rhetoric is recycled ad nauseum, a testament to the triumph of optimism over experience. As Tinker waxes lyrical about Earth's geological epochs, one cannot escape the feeling that this narrative, rich and fascinating though it may be, serves to distract rather than enlighten. The planet's climatic ballet across the eons is invoked not as a call to action, but as an excuse for inertia. After all, if the Earth has survived ice ages and warm periods before, why fret over a few degrees of warming? Then we come to the spectre of net zero, a term so fraught with ambiguity and wishful thinking that it might as well be a unicorn. It is the perfect fig leaf for the environmentally conscious, a token gesture towards action that demands nothing of substance. Peterson and Tinker prance around this concept with the glee of children playing in a sandbox, blissfully unaware of the sandcastle crumbling around them. And let us not overlook the developing world, whose aspirations for energy, independence and prosperity are so cavalierly sacrificed on the altar of Western environmental puritanism. Tinker acknowledges this injustice, yet his resignation to the status quo is palpable. It seems the gears of global inequality are too well greased to be tampered with by mere mortals. In their meandering voyage through the tempest of environmental and energy discourse, Peterson and Tinker manage to navigate with all the precision of a drunken sailor, veering off course at the slightest whiff of a difficult truth. Their conversation, replete with nods to geological epochs and the sanctimonious invocation of net zero, ultimately rings hollow, a mere simulacrum of depth and understanding. The dire immediacy of climate change, a beast at our door, is reduced to mere background noise, a distant thunder ignored by the duo's relentless pontificating on historical climate patterns. This oversight is not just academic negligence, it is an intellectual crime betraying a profound disregard for the cascading consequences of our collective inaction. As they waltz through topics with the grace of a bull in a china shop, one cannot help but wonder if their true talent lies not in enlightening the masses, but in obfuscating the critical issues at hand, wrapping the urgent need for drastic environmental action in layers of geological trivia and philosophical musings. In the end, the podcast is a testament not to the power of dialogue, but to the paralysis of discourse. It is a ship adrift, captained by two men who, despite their professed earnestness, are content to sail in circles, mistaking the echo of their own voices for the sound of progress. The crisis we face is not one that can be solved by finding a radical middle, but by recognizing the urgency of radical action. Alas, it appears Peterson and Tinker are more concerned with charting the depths of their philosophical navel-gazing than with steering us away from the iceberg that looms ever closer.